do when we get them, you can bet we'd take them down to the hairpins and try to figure out what makes well, them work. if someone made a apparatus, then it probably can crash, no matter how advanced <laughs> it is, you know, because there's going to be some circumstance where uh, this thing can crash. Of mm -hmm. course, uh, Meyer got a boost from the Lazar allegations because um, even though Lazar never talked about Pleiadians, but he talked about the sports model. Right, and, and we are talking model, about a gentleman uh, named Bob Lazar who allegedly was involved as a uh, scientist at in Area, Area 51, 51 in Nellis or, Air Force or Base or in Nevada. Lake. Right. Goes by number uh, Who is extremely controversial too. He is in himself, uh, you betcha. So anyway, he claimed that he worked on these um, spacecraft, uh, which they were nicknamed the sports model, and right, one of which ones. looks identical to the Pleiadian. Um. Now this, on the other hand, is, this is not a controversial. Mm -hmm. This is well-established case. With uh, many, many witnesses just north yeah, of New York City, if the, you're not familiar with Westchester. The Hudson Valley flap, uh, which went basically from 1990, 1982 into the late 80s. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's still some cases, yeah. but not a wave. It was intense. In fact, about this time, you and I were up in Westchester. I remember very much that big conference. Remember, 2000 was the one time people. I met uh, Dr. Hynek. Uh-huh. Okay, here we go. Back above uh, the earth here. Now, on the, yeah, the moon days are gone now, <laughs> and now you will be seeing many more NASA footages, but all taken by the space shuttle. Yeah. And this is a very odd one, and I have no explanation whatsoever. Yeah, let's watch closely. And uh, unfortunately, unless they are pressed, as it happened on the STS-44, which Correct. we'll see later. Yeah. Oh, look uh, at that. NASA usually does not volunteer an explanation. They, you know, that is they, one of my favorites, though. That is definitely something. Okay. This is one of the few that is not dated. Yeah. And it's one that both of us are, we don't know what to really make of it. Yeah, it's uh, in some sense um, similar to some photographs, like the Lubbock Light, yes, uh, famous it, it, photograph it's, from it's uh, they, you know, 1951. Uh, um, a U or a V-shaped formation of lights. Uh, it looks like it's several generations old from the The only thing I could suggest it was uh, some kind of formation of aircraft, but uh, I, we don't know anything about it. Um. Now, this is our first bit of footage um, by Ed Walters. I think there are several entries by him uh, in this. No, I'm not sure that they're by Walters, but we will see certainly many in Gulf Breeze. From the Gulf Breeze area, which but is in Florida, and which has an extremely high incidence of well-observed uh, unknowns in the sky. Right, in which uh, the popularity or the fame of the Gulf Breeze area yeah. was started by Walters uh, with a series of uh, very uh, striking but also controversial mm -hmm. uh, Polaroid photographs. And his book was the Gulf Breeze... Sightings. Okay. Yeah. But his first book, yes. Right. Uh, but later we will see some other videotapes uh, taken. Even if you do not believe in, uh, in Walters, there are many oh, yeah. other footage taken well, they... in Gulf Breeze that has nothing to do with Walters. Yes, uh, indeed. This is the first one from Israel, yeah. and we will be seeing many more. And uh, I, 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 if you happen to be fluent in Hebrew and you listen to the track, uh, you will hear the actual people that are standing there commenting. Uh, if you're like us and you're not fluent in Hebrew, listen to the tone of voice. There is a pitch that is universal in people capturing images like this. Uh, yeah. Tremendous amount and, of and excitement, excitement, sometimes anxiety, uh, uh, trepidation, foul, uh, vocabulary often, uh, yeah. nervous laughter. Um, it, you, you are sincerely in the presence of people who feel that they are experiencing something extraordinary, and in fact, they are. Whatever it is. Oh yeah, when we, totally when we get to, to the late 90s, yeah. uh, we will be seeing some, uh, yeah, I had, even myself, after 20 years, I had never seen such weird craft <laughs> as the stuff we will see from Israel that uh, Mike Hesseman has uh, come up with. Yeah. Uh, uh, really weird stuff. I know um, our colleague Dr. David Jacobs out of Temple University, a respected scholar who champions, uh, again, some of the more controversial points of view, but who has approached it through very careful scholarship. Uh, well, he did his PhD thesis yes, on the Blue Book, on the yeah. history of the UFO controversy in America. And it that came was, out uh, as a brilliant book, it was and I wish so, it would go into reprint. It was so well done that it became a, a commercial book, yes, yeah. even though it was a PhD thesis. This uh, is a second one now from Gulf Breeze. Yes. No, and okay. uh, this is a very, very strange. Uh, I, I, I have been familiar with this footage for many, now, for many years at now. At different times as lecturers, both Antonio and I have stood on this stretch of beach and sky watched with our friends. Uh, what we are seeing here, I just think is amazing. Uh, what these things do is not static at all either. Uh, when the photographer pulls back, you'll be able to see 
There it is, in lower yeah. frame. That is waves breaking on the beach. And, uh, and you will see that the objects start multiplying. Now it begins with two, now you see three, and it will go on and on. This tape goes for, for, for a few minutes. Yeah, and then they, they uh, disappear again. At the end, they disappear. So uh, Here we come with number four. And I must say, it must be very exciting to be having a sighting like this, especially with other people. Uh, I think it's almost a curse to have something like this happen to you while you're all alone. There's no way to communicate. Yeah, you what? see? They, and you okay. see them appearing, which is uh, very, very unusual. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, later on, uh, in a lot of the footage from Mexico and elsewhere, we will see also... Uh, but not as clear as this mm. one, though. We will also see uh, sequences of little balls, and yes. they start also kind of multiplying. But in here, they're so uh, luminous yeah, that they there is clearly see them appearing. There is nothing ambiguous at yeah. all about this material. Look at that. There goes another one. And let us again recall that we have to begin by knowing we know nothing about what the heck is really going on out there. There may be... Uh, mechanical situations going on that we are not capable of. It may be an object that has been sitting there that simply lights up on cue. Yeah. We uh, don't know that one. Two, uh, there's always, at least for some people, the, um, you know, the government hypothesis as well, because Gulf Breeze is a near, very, very large... Pensacola uh, yeah, Naval Base. Exactly, and the Eglin Air Force Base, too. And it's very easy to just say anything like this and, is oh, uh, military so special, you know, uh, tests and top secret stuff, right. black projects, you name it. Could be, though. And some of it may well be, of course. Some of it may well be. Uh, though, on the other hand, if it's a very black project, they would not do it in, uh, in a public area. I don't uh, think for so. that, they do have Area 51. Sure. Uh, when people tell me about UFO sightings in Area 51, well, then you're expected to see weird yeah. stuff because that's where they test. Area 51, uh, uh, again, part of the Nellis Air Force Base complex by Groom Lake, that's about 80 miles or so, I believe, south of Las Vegas, has been used for research, development, advanced weapons tests, and for years. advanced aircraft. It was one of the places where our uh, SR-71, the Blackbird, uh, the Stealth Fighter, the Stealth, as well as um, um, our original U-2. Yeah, they were, were all tested. tested. And, yeah. and uh, it's, it's a very remote area. Yeah. It's a desert and mountain uh, area. There's, and now it's uh, nobody, become a tourist spot. Well, now they have <laughs> even the extraterrestrial highway and everything, uh, which you actually see in the beginning in the credits. Yes, the that's beginning. not a fake sign, folks, so you'll see it when it comes no, up again. No, that was officially real. inaugurated by the governor of Nevada and everything. Uh, as, Good move. Uh, well, they were already getting so many tourists that I guess he decided to <laughs> go along and uh, it helps to prop the economy of Nevada. Indeed. I think we're about to start seeing these retracting. Yeah, there now goes the middle exactly. one. They came, and now they kind of uh, begin to fade out. Bye, guys. Okay, Rio. Yeah, well, Brazil, uh, it's always been a very, very active uh, uh, spot for UFOs. Um, this goes pretty quick, as I recall. Even since the 40s. Uh, in the 50s, you had very famous um, waves uh, and photographs taken. In and there. also a comparable contactee movement, correct? Uh, correct. Also, there's a, well, it's a very exuberant country, and there's a big... Um, uh, sort of native spiritualist movements, yes. uh, you know, the... the um, Almost a uh, cross between Catholicism yeah. and, and, um, and the African, African religious sure. animus, and, and it's also blended very well with the alien belief.